Here's my mama and papa, everybody. We was just now making the video for y'all and it just randomly cut off. So we're gonna have to do a part one and a part two. And I guess she's gonna start where she was at reading. I was in Luke 11, um, I mean Luke 12, and I'm gonna start with the 15th verse. And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covenants, for a man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possess. And he spoke a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room for to bestow my fruits? Now see here, said, I, I, I. He's not thinking about God and what God can do for him. He's, he's thinking about himself. He's done this. And he said, this will I do. See, here he goes again. This will I do. Not thinking about what God can do for him. I will put down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, so thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine, take thine, eat, take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. See, here he's talking about again. He's doing all three stuff. He's going to eat and drink, and he's going to be merry and do whatever he wants to do, you know. Not thinking about the Lord, what the Lord done for him and what the Lord can do for him. But, but God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall these things be which thou hast provided? God provides everything for us. It's not We don't do it. It's God does it for us. So is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. Say that he don't know God. He don't, he don't read the word. He's not in the word. All he thinks about is the worldly things, you know, and what he can do for himself. Um, so is he that layeth up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. When, you're, when you have God, that's when you're rich. When you read his word and look into God and thank him for the things that he's provided for you, that's when you are rich. Um, it says, and he said unto his disciples, therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body, what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment. raiment. Consider the ravens, for they sow nor reap, which neither have storehouses nor barns. And God feedeth them, how much more are you better than the fowls? And which of you, with taking thought, can add to his statue one cubic? If you then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take you thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you and ye of little faith? Yes, that's what we should uh, know, that God takes care of his children. He provides for them. He uh, makes a way from the have food. God knows our every need, and he will supply our, our every need. If you trust in the Lord, he'll be right there with you for you. No matter what situations you go through, if you're hungry, he will provide food for you. I remember hearing a preacher saying that uh, there was this woman, <clears throat> and she was in uh, her house and didn't have no food at all. And she was praying, Lord, provide food for me today. You know, and um, there was a man outside working in the garden next door. He heard her praying. And he said, um, and uh, laid on his heart to go get that woman some uh, food. So he got her a box of food and put it on the porch for her. And then he went and hid. And knocked, he knocked on the door and went and hid. And she came out there and he said, uh, she said, thank you, Lord, for this food that you have provided for me to this day. And he jumped out and said, it wasn't God, it was me. And she said, thank you, God, for uh, telling that man to go get me some food. Uh, you thank God. He, God is the one that laid it up on that man's heart to go get that food, you know. He thought he was going to make a mockery, but he didn't because God is in everything. He will have people, you'll find favor with people. Uh, if you're in need or something, God will send some uh, thought to someone to go and help you out. And uh, I remember many a times when uh, Milton got out of work and we didn't, uh, we had five kids here at home. Couldn't sign up on welfare or anything because uh, Milton had a car. He had to go backwards and forth to work. Or they told us they could provide food stamps for us, but Milton would have to leave the house and go live with, with, with his mother. And we weren't going to do that. That's lying around, you know. So uh, God provided for us. I mean, the church brought food here for us when we needed it. God was just so good. You know, he's always there with you. He will make a way when there seemeth not to be a way. So trust in the Lord. He will provide for you. If the gods so clothe the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, 
How much more will he clothe you, O ye little, little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the na nations of the world seek after. And your father knoweth that you have need of these things. See, he knows, says in the word, he knows everything about you. He knows what your needs are. But whether seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that you have, and give alms. Provide yourself bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approach, neither moth corrupt. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. If you love the Lord and you want to do what uh, God has for you to do, to uh, go preach his word, to go to church, you have a desire for God. You know, God will provide for you. Most people want uh, their desires is to be out in the world, to go do pleasure things, you know. But God wants you to have him in your heart and do what he'd have you do. It says, sell that you have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not. For no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupt. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And my heart is with Jesus and in heaven. And one day I mean to go there to be with the Lord, you know. Let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. We are to let Jesus' light shine through us that others can see that he lives in us. <clears throat> Amen. And we are to be an example. And ye yourselves like unto man that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants who the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. God wants to find us watching for him, you know. It says, Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch or if he shall come in the third watch and find them so blessed are these servants. So, yeah, uh, we need to be watching at all times, you know, and praying and talking to God because we don't know when he might come uh, and we want, uh, we want him to find us ready. And this know that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us or even to all? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord when he cometh shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, My Lord delayeth them, his coming, and shall begin to beat the manservant and maidens, and to eat and drink and, and be drunken, the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him asunder, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. He will go to hell to be with the devil. You know, so we want to go to heaven and be with the Lord. So let's be ready at all times. We don't know when the Lord might come. He could come right this very minute, you know, and we want to be ready when he comes to meet us because we want to go to heaven. We don't want to go to a devil's hell where there's torment all the time. You know, but I love the Lord. I thank the Lord for everything. I thank the Lord for y'all. I hope y'all got something out of word. So here's Milton now. Praise God. Thank you, Margaret. <clears throat> That's real good. I'm going to read a little bit in, in the uh, book of John, the fifth chapter. I'm just going to read, I guess, around about 14, 15 verses, I believe. Uh, unless the Lord uh, has me read more. It says, After this there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep's market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bathsheba. I believe I'm saying it right. Mm -hmm. Having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folks of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the waters. And there was people that was uh, needing a healing. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the waters. Whosoever then, first after the troubling of the waters, stepped in, was made whole of what whatsoever disease he had. Praise God. You know, men Margaret went about 
10, 15 years ago, we went over there and we went and visited that pool and it was empty, no water in it. I believe I would have kept it going, don't you? I believe I would have too. <laughs> the angel come down and trouble the waters. But uh, anyway, let me read on. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. Think about that. 38 years. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he, he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered, him, sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool, but while I am coming, another step of down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole. He'd been he'd been in that way for thirty eight years, but he was immediately made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the seventh. Praise God. The, the Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered it then, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, What man is that which said unto thee, Take up thy bed and walk? And he, he that was healed wished not who he was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterwards, Jesus found of him in the temple and said unto him, Now let's, let's pay attention to this year. Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon thee. That's right, thee. amen. And that, and that there still goes today. When God heals you, 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 then you can't, you know, you get all relaxed and want to uh, satisfy the flesh and go out and do the things you're doing yeah. before. You can't do that. You, you know, well, you know, let me read it again. Behold, thou art made whole. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. That's right. And I've known of that happen to people. Yep. People being healed, they uh, sick, dying, and, and they repent, and God heals them. And then they go back to doing what they were doing yep. before. Yep. And then uh, it either comes back on them or something worse yep. comes on them, That's and true. they die. They yep. die. And, you know, need to take heed to God's word. You know, uh, and, and we need to also testify. When God does something for us, we need to tell him and give him praise. Let me read on. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done these things on the seventh day. You think about that. That's awful, man. Yeah. <clears throat> but Jesus answered, answered them, My father, which hitherto and I work, therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he had not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do for right, what amen. things soever the, he doeth, these, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. But God also will use us to heal people. We can pray in Jesus' name, and they raise the dead, cast out demons, uh, do great miracles. That's right. It says in the Word. We, we can do that. Giving Jesus the credit, yeah. praying in the name of Jesus, we have that power. Yeah, Jesus gave us that power. And there's power in prayer. That's right, amen. Uh, you know, the old devil will have you to think that uh, you're just saying words and just going out and ain't going no more. But that's a, that's a lie of Satan. That's right, amen, it is. You know, you, you say a prayer and you believe, yep. it, it, it move mountains. That's right. Heal the sick, raise the dead. Just go to pray it and believe it and then stand on it. Yeah. And, 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 and that's it, leave, leave it there. 
And if they ain't healed, the next time you see them again, pray for them again. That's right. Amen. And ask him to believe. And God will answer prayers. God to does be. answer prayers. Got to hold that, on to him. And there is power in prayer. That's right. You know, amen. We, we, we need to realize that. When we pray, we 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 have great power. Mm -hmm. Even though it just comes out, you think just plain words. But if you pray <clears throat> in the name of Jesus, things happen. Yeah. You know. You know, I love the Lord and want to give him praise and glory and want to encourage everybody. You know, we <clears throat> repent and give our heart to God and serve serve him yeah. and give him the praise. We don't want to take none of the glory from him. You know, all praise and all glory goes to him. That's right, <clears throat> amen. And I pray I've said something to encourage you. You know, God is good and uh, we'll see you soon. Next Nobody. Sunday, Lord's willing. Uh, we went on a picnic today, so we didn't get back. Usually we do this after Sunday school around 2 o'clock, something like that. But we went on a picnic, and we did, And when we got home, we were so tired, we had to lay down for a few minutes. Uh, we're, we're in our 70s, so <laughs> we had to take a little nap before we brought the word to y'all. But God gave us the word. He told us what to, to give to y'all. So like Milton said, I hope it encouraged you, uplift you, but just hold on to God. He's there for you. Amen. Love y'all. <clears throat> Amen. That's all. Well, we love y'all and God bless y'all. Amen.